But yeah, that's how you connect RAM and build RAM. And um, by the way, the answer or data currently in the RAM, if you need it for something, you can get it up like this, based on this design. So that's what's in currently in the RAM. Ah, I didn't copy the top again. So there goes the loading. Also, in the red game one, I had these things go underground. I had a little space, bigger space between these RAM cells. Loud wire that goes underground. And then this would go on the surface. And it was really ugly. Which is why I don't use this type of RAM anymore. Um, but yeah, that's the basic RAM concept thing. Also recommend you take two of these and you wire them to the ALU. So that's your two ALU registers. Hope you learned something. Hope you make your CPU. Hope you understood it, because I really hope I explained it well. And I hope you can put this to use, and I hope you credit me if you're going to make something. It's not really necessary, but yeah. Also send me the creations you make, because I'm really interested in seeing what people can do with my kind of stuff. I've inspired people with my GPU. I was I originally had the first one. Now people are complaining, like, you don't have the first one, look at this one. I actually mailed it before they did. And the GPUs before me weren't technically GPUs, they just drew dots on the screen. It's like an ALU. It's like calling an adder an ALU. It just does one thing. It's not that. You know. Okay, so, again, thanks for watching. Bye. <coughs> Hi guys, in this episode I'll be showing you how to make RAM for your ALU, which will make it a CPU. According to Salaja's definition, at least. So, yeah. First thing is, RAM really is just data flip-flops ordered in a special way. So, in order to make one of these, you, well, you can find one of those on mine as well, just like the adder. Uh, I built my own, the Dude Flop. It's pretty compact, and one of the best things about it is that it's quite low and doesn't consume that much but it's not that high so you can just you know, use this in your RAM thing or you can make up your own one basically how a data flip flop works is let me just get out a button you have a clock and you have data to make it that simple I'm going to put a repeater here and you have output, of course. So, pushing this button will update the data flip flop. Just gonna do this. Um, it'll change to whatever this switch is. So, this switch is on. You push the button, it turns on. Switching that switch will not affect the output until you push the button again. Then, whatever this switch is set to, Whatever this repeater is set to, we'll change what this is set to. It's off now. Oh. Big on rain. There we are. It's off. That isn't completely RAM though. Because that's only the saving of RAM. The loading of RAM I'll show you just now. So first thing you're going to do is, because this is a 3-bit computer, is... Well, let's just make the RAM cell first. Usually, the, there's much better ways of building RAM. This is just the easiest, or easiest to understand method. It is by far not the most compact when it gets really large. It's a single bus load save system. This may take a bit, little amount of time. I haven't done this kind of RAM in a while. So, yeah, that there, that there, that there. I'll show you how to make the dude flop just now. Be sure to credit me. You don't have to, but it would be nice. 
I would appreciate it. Um, let me do a white ghost on that thing. Oh, I hate this. There. I just invert the input because everything that goes on these buses is inverted. And then this goes into the data flip flop or the dude flop. Slash rot at ninety. Hoping it's facing the right way. Whoops. What's it? 180 degrees in what direction? Really? Placing the switches with wire. Uh, right, I was meant to show you how to make these, not how to paste them. Okay. So basically, you got a block. You got two pieces of wire. You can have a repeater here, it's optional. If you want to prevent interference, if you like have so small circuits, it's this repeater here. Otherwise you have... Yeah, hard to explain. Okay, so inverter. Do this. Two blocks in that way. Two wires. Block there. Torch there, wire there, torch there, torch there, repeater here, and this is quite crucial. On the second delay, I might show you later okay. why that is. Then optional, well, if you're gonna put a button there, and then you put your switch there, you put wire. There. Okay, now why this delay is here? If you push this button. Okay, probably you can't see with the recording lag. Wait, it's got something to do with the north south quirk, maybe. I don't know, but sometimes this just blinks in one tick. So I usually put this on the delay of two. I guess it's not necessary if you don't have a problem with that. Make it one tick faster-ish in some way. So yeah, okay. Now, wait. Should I have the loading thing separate? the loading controller thing. Maybe I should. Mm. Quite hard choice. Well, it's easier the other way, but harder. Also, sorry, this has got to move one to the right. Yeah, I'm gonna do it on the same line then. Whoops. Ish. Okay, I'm gonna have to move this torch over there.
Turns out I put the inverters in the wrong place. But these need to be wires. Again, I'm doing this much more basic. You can find a pretty decent design, the red game one of this type of RAM. Except I didn't use the dude flop. In case you haven't gotten it yet, it's dude or int flop. My name. So, I'm doing this tiling thing again. It's the laziest yet fastest way. Yet easiest to understand way. Don't recommend you do it if you're looking for speed. And it's just for tutorial. Take Be day, you stupid son. So yeah. Basically you do that. So now there's a row of wires underneath and a row of wires on top. This needs to be inverted. Yeah. Okay, so we have an inverted version of this data going up here. And then we have one of these things again. So this chooses to read, that chooses to write. So, um, wait, we're almost done, we're almost done. Just some touches there. And uh, that should be it. Right. Right. So you have many, many, many of these things. Usually. The amount of RAM depends on how much RAM you have. Pretty obvious. So say we want to save... Two. Pretty easy. That is meant to be a button, sorry. Saves. Okay, so we're going to take this off. Now say we want to put whatever is on this RAM onto the main bus. Wait, sorry. It's the powering roll. Why is it doing that? Did it even save? Okay, let's try saving again. It's not saving. Or it is, but then it's going away again. Didn't I do something wrong? Looks fine. Except that this is... No, that's fine. Excuse me for the technical difficulty. Wait a second. There was meant to be a repeater here, wasn't there? There we are. Now it's working again. Okay, it's saved two to the RAM. Load it. And two's on the bus. So we usually have lots of these, like all the way down, long, long rows of this stuff. So you could save and load to RAM. This is the Red Game 1's RAM system. Which is why you can only save RAM in one direction. By the way. So I'm gonna try to copy this and paste it a few times. Just copy. 
I would just recommend to have these repeaters at the end. I may have destroyed the original RAM. Let's just get rid of all this. Prevent interference. Let's select this again. Select. Fine. Wait, what the heck is this? Some previous RAM, isn't it? Second position. First position. Hmm, I'm gonna copy this. I don't know. Let's copy from here. There we are. Now usually you would have something that allows you to choose whether the LU goes on here or not. Because it's interfering with the RAM.